Hello students, uh, this is Melvin here again from deadeconstutor.com. Um, as you probably know, of late, uh, in recent years, there's been quite a, a bit of focus on two emerging themes uh, in um, the study of macroeconomics. Okay, these themes pertain to that of quantitative easing and austerity. Okay. So in this um, video, I'll be sharing with students uh, a certain framework to help you understand these two themes. And in part one, which is uh, what I'll be covering today, I'll focus more on austerity. All right. But uh, before that, one way to look at these two um, um, economic concepts is to think of them as limits of macro policies. Okay. So traditionally, <clears throat> if I think about, say, uh, fiscal policy, we focus on limitations of this policy. Now, the difference between limitations and limits is that when you think about limitations, these are um, constraints which may limit or restrict the effectiveness of a policy. Okay? But that does not mean that that policy cannot be used. Okay? So if you consider some limitations of fiscal policy, I'll be thinking of number one, the size of the multiplier. Okay? So if the multiplier size is small, fiscal policy will probably be less effective. Okay? Uh, whether you're trying to reduce AD to reduce inflation or whether you're trying to boost um, AD to increase national income. Aside from the size of the multiplier, the state of expectations okay, may also influence the effective effectiveness of fiscal policy. So if um, <clears throat> I decide to cut taxes okay, to either spur consumption or investment spending, if investors or consumers are very pessimistic, then the extent to which they will spend or invest would also be limited. Okay? Some other limitations may include um, time lag, <clears throat> okay? or to a certain extent, the crowding out effect. All right. So if I look at the limitations here, they make fiscal policy less effective, but they do not act as showstoppers. So what would really be a limit which once hit would render fiscal policy uh, inappropriate for use? Okay, I'm thinking of the state of the budget. So we all know that um, when running a, uh, a budget deficit or when rolling out an expansionary fiscal policy, the government needs money. So, if based on the amount they receive, which comes from tax revenue, versus the amount of spending, which is under government expenditure, a deficit would mean <clears throat> the net number is negative, okay? And a series of successive, okay, or persistent deficits may result in a government debt now, it is not uncommon for governments to run into debt, okay? which is why so many governments issue bonds. But if the debt becomes, becomes very big and <clears throat> unsustainable, okay? so one might think of the woes in the Eurozone now, <clears throat> specifically in these countries, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain. Ireland is slightly better, okay? but surely not in the case of Greece. Sorry. <clears throat> Okay. So when the debt is very big, the government may find it very hard to borrow more funds to fund fiscal policy or to fund its spending. So that's when fiscal policy becomes uh, inappropriate okay? or it cannot even be considered as an option. So students should take note of this. Okay? If you are doing a case study and the extract is talking to you about austerity, all right? and if there happens to be a question where they ask you to propose policies to address the problems in this country, do not adopt fiscal policy as your main policy because clearly you're supposed to recognize that this policy cannot be used. Okay, so now that you have an understanding of what austerity is, all right, or what's the backdrop to a, a, a government debt, what austerity does, okay, is that you are trying to lower G or increase T in order to reduce the deficit and hopefully accumulate surpluses and the surplus can be used to pay off the outstanding government debt 
Alright, this is what austerity is all about. An important note is that while this looks like a contractionary fiscal policy, the intention is not to lower AD. All right? The intention is purely to reduce the deficit. In fact, austerity often takes place against, uh, say, the backdrop of a recession. So clearly, inflation is not a concern. All right? So framework-wise, okay, to understand austerity, I'll say we focus on three parts. Number one, how it works. Okay? Then, limitations of austerity. And the third part, by extension, we will study the impact of austerity in Europe because Singapore doesn't practice austerity, right? But how would austerity policies in Europe affect Singapore, right? You all know that when we study macroeconomics, a lot of the questions are based on the Singapore context, okay? So we focus on, again, how it works, limitations, and impact on Singapore. With this uh, framework, it should help students answer most questions pertaining to austerity, okay? So my econ's guidebook, I highlighted that um, under how it works, huh? okay? So the aim of austerity is to contribute towards a surplus, which can be used to offset the government debt, okay? Furthermore, with a lower uh, debt, the risk of the government going bankrupt is lower, all right? And that helps to bring investors back into the economy. When investments come in, corporate tax revenue also rises, and this helps to reduce the deficit as well. So it's very simple how austerity works, okay? Straightforward reduction of spending and boosting of revenue. But there are some um, um, obstacles, okay, to the effectiveness of austerity policy, okay? First, when a government reduces spending, okay, G, we know this is contractionary. And we do know that uh, when automatic stabilizers kick in, okay, lower AD leads to lower national income, which lowers the tax revenue collected by the government. At the same time, welfare spending may have to go up automatically, right? Because these are already pre-programmed, uh, preset stabilizers. So this higher T, sorry, higher G and lower T, okay, because of lower tax revenue and higher government spending may worsen the debt, okay? Rendering the policy uh, ineffective or rather it worsens the problem, okay? Furthermore, with poorer economic prospects, okay, a country's credit rating may worsen. This means that the country will be seen as less credit worthy. When a country is less credit worthy, borrowing cost will rise. So the burden of interest repayments also rises. Okay? And at the same time, we know that cutting G is not straightforward. Okay? For, ex for example, if you're building a highway, you can't stop midway. Okay? And higher income tax may also force out high income earners or drive away investors. So overall, we can see that the limitations would actually worsen the budget deficit. Okay? So how do you remember the four limitations? You can use the acronym GRIT, uh, which basically means you need GRIT to see through austerity. Right? So GRIT stands for G, R, I, and T. Okay? So if you look at the part on how it works and limitations, Quite clearly, austerity will probably work better in the longer term, okay, when investments come back to this economy. In the short term, there will be more or rather greater short-term pain in return for long-term gain. Um, <clears throat> moving on to the third part, to understand how austerity affects Singapore, or more generally, to understand how any event affects an economy, you can use my DICE approach. Okay? D stands for direct impact. Okay? We try to link it, uh, or rather, we try to link this event to all four goals. And if, let's say, there's any goal that's not covered, we can then move on to indirect impact to see whether we can draw additional links. Okay? Following that, we'll look at counteracting measures. So what can be done to offset or to alleviate the impact of this event? And finally, we end off with an evaluation. In macroeconomics, evaluation usually ties back to the nature and state of the economy. Okay? So what's the direct impact of austerity in uh, Europe or even in uh, uh, Greece on Singapore? Okay, so we know that austerity results in a contractionary impact on European countries. So with lower income, they will buy less goods from Singapore. Okay, based on Singapore's pattern of trade, we know that we export high quality products. So clearly these are regarded as normal goods. So if a fall in X minus M, Singapore will experience lower growth, higher unemployment, and a worsening balance of payment. Okay? 
demand pull inflation may fall, all right, but I don't think this is likely to be a concern, okay, because Singapore is so reliant on the rest of the world for growth. So if Europe is in trouble, which is the situation now, Singapore is unlikely to be experiencing full employment, okay? But on the brighter side, higher taxes in Europe may lead to investors gravitating towards Singapore. Okay, so we see a rise in foreign direct investment. And the rise in FDI, okay, can affect all four goals, okay? So actual growth and potential growth rises, cyclical unemployment falls, and the BOP improves through the capital or the financial account, okay? And um, important inflation may also fall, okay? If let's say slower growth in Europe leads to lower global demand for goods and services. So lower commodity prices also suggest uh, a fall in important inflation for Singapore. But this is still a smaller point, right? Because uh, the link is not as direct as uh, what we discussed earlier in terms of X minus M and FDI, okay? So of course, we must not forget that austerity is a bitter pill, which is meant to improve the prospects in Europe. So in the long run, when this succeeds, okay, X minus M will recover for Singapore. Okay, so we don't really have to go through the indirect impact because we've already considered all four goals under direct impact. But what else can Singapore do to alleviate the negative impacts here? Okay, so we could consider <coughs> expansionary policies. Maybe we can have a slight depreciation of the Sing dollar or increase in G. All right. So these are all expansionary policies that help to bolster AD, to lend some temporary support while austerity helps to improve the prospects of European economies okay, in the longer term. And evaluation doesn't have to be in your last paragraph. Okay? You can pepper this throughout your essay. But we do know that Singapore is export driven. Okay? So the foreign net exports will hurt us significantly. Okay? State-wise, state is time dependent. Eh? So state-wise, I would say Singapore is likely to be already facing slow growth. Okay? So the contractionary effects of austerity will exacerbate the problems in the short term. Okay? But of course, if FDI comes in, this is still going to be, or it's going to lend some relief to Singapore. Okay? So what you've seen now is a framework to understanding austerity. It starts with an understanding of how it works and very uh, importantly, not to confuse it with the intent of reducing demand pool inflation. Okay, after you understand how it works, you study the limitations and you can remember the GREED acronym. And finally, to examine the impact on Singapore, you can use the DICE framework, which is a standard framework, but the points will differ depending on the context. Okay, so I hope you found this uh, discussion useful. In my next video, I'll be sharing with you um, a similar framework for understanding uh, quantitative easing. Okay, if you have questions, you can drop me an email at that econs tutor at gmail.com. Okay, or you can visit my website, which is um, by the same name, uh, www.thatecons.tutor.com. Okay. Uh, if you feel comfortable, you can also drop me an SMS at 9070 Okay, that's all for me. Thank you.